Welcome to the Karen Berniston May Design Team Challenge 2024. The theme this time is From the Vault. So we are using a previous card we've made for inspiration for our newest card. I use this Thanksgiving Autumn Park scene to inspire my Cherry Blossoms Park card. And I'll be showing you how I made it. So I'm starting today with three pieces of six by six and a quarter paper and then one six by six square and this is going to be my card base for a cherry blossom card so i'm going to score at a quarter inch on my pieces that are six and a quarter And just double checking, make sure that all of those are good pieces. So we scored and fold those both ways. Just get those folds trained. And before we assemble this card base, I need to cut the windows into two of the pieces. So I've cut four pieces of a thin decorative paper that I'm going to use for the outside frames of this. I've got a lighter green that I'm going to use for grass on the base. I will adhere these pieces with double-sided tape around the edges so that when I cut out the window, I'll be able to reuse that paper. I've got one panel covered and I'm getting the backing paper off this next one. I like to use the thinner cardstock for these panels knowing that I'm going to be putting decorative papers on top of them and also the thinner lighter weight because this card is going to be bulky by the time you get the three folded panels in. And I want to make sure I line up the direction of the paper in the same way. And I like this technique of pulling off just the corners so that you can line up papers and then it makes it so much easier to go and it looks like I didn't get it lined up perfectly so we'll do a little trimming I've marked my panel the six inch square with a T for top B for bottom so I'll know exactly how it's gonna go now I'm gonna glue the base panel on and now I'll glue the green grassy panel underneath here and I'll just put that up. Because I didn't have enough of this darker green paper but I had some strips of it left I'm going to use another coordinating paper from the same paper set to get this all to line up. And this decorative piece down here will have a bench over it, so it shouldn't matter too much. And I'm just eyeballing the uh, placement of this paper because I know I'm going to line up these strips with the edge and it will cover over any. And again, I'm just making sure that my paper pattern is matching on both sides with the swirls going all in the same direction. And I've got a little excess, so I will trim that on. So I'm taking the largest of the crosshatch squares from Diane Berniston, and I am going to line these up on the outside line and I'm using my grid on my mat here eyeball to make sure these are evenly placed to make a nice even frame and I'll run it through my die cut machine. So I have die cut through 
three layers and because I only put the tape on the outside of that, it means I get three extra squares that I'll keep in my stash to use for other things. And then we'll now glue these fronts onto the card base just so that they're all going the same way. Yes, that's the way they need to go. So we'll just put some glue on that. will probably take a marker or some type of coloring to fill in these white gaps. Now we'll get I'm really having to burnish these on. I'm covering up the back with and the three seams will get covered with a decorative piece of paper. And I always find it best to put this on when the card is folded up, because then you can see what is and isn't going to get covered well with paper. And also you can see what you're gonna to have to trim off that way. But I'm going to put my paperweights on this just so that it will glue soundly. And I have one left piece that will go on the back side of what is the grassy strip. So I've cut five of the trees and leaf sets from the tree pop up set. And what I'm doing now is I'm gluing the leaves onto the tree. And for each of these apertures, I need to make one tree that is the reverse of the other ones so that when they line up, they'll match. So all I'm doing is I'm putting glue on the tips of the tree where the leaves will be anchored. So there we have the two trees. So I've cut out 16 of the little flower dies from the tree set. I've put them on top of some thick plastic foam. And all I'm doing is just making them into cute, just give them a little texture. And then I will glue these onto the tree. So I'm using the iron fence pop-up to cut eight fence. Here's a whole one. And for each of these to make six inches across, you need to cut off the end piece so that you'll have a piece like this. And then this piece is you count one, two, three, four from the end. So one, two, three, four. And then this piece will be glued over that one so that you can get the six full six inches. And the reason I didn't cut, um, that I only cut eight, is because for these two side pieces, you can actually, with, with what's left over on one side, you actually have enough to cut one more so that you end up with just this as the waste piece. So when you glue the two trees together, you don't want to glue the top all the way. 
because it needs to go there. And yes, I know the tree doesn't go all the way down through the fence, but it's kind of an optical illusion. So you'll glue the tree parts like that so that when it's done, the tree is sandwiched between the fence and around the frame. So you can see I've got glue on all of the details on the back side. And then all I'm doing is matching up mostly the scroll work. Because if you get that matched up, then pretty much everything else is going to match up. So I use the tulip from the Garden Charm set to make the tulips that are on both sides. To get these red uh, ones, I cut them out of yellow and then I used um, a red glitter brush to paint on the um, flames or dashes of color on those tulips. So here's how the card is going to look. We just, when it's closed, we just have to finish putting on the bench inside and deciding if we want to add a fountain like the original card had. So with the card finished, as we open it up, we've added the bench to following the assembly instructions. We've made, assembled a squirrel and the sentiments of happy birthday and happy spring. And there's our card.